What's up world and welcome to Nuxtux Creative Studio. My name is Jonathan and I'll be your host. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create this zoom out transition as well as this whip pan transition all inside of Caden Live. All right, so let's get started. So this is my project file over here. So if you look over in the project bin, I have the clips that we'll be using as well as the title that I use later on. I'll start by creating a new sequence up here. So go to project, add sequence, I'll call this transitions, press OK, and here we are. So for the first transition over here, I'll just grab, I'll grab our first clip. So this clip over here. So we really only need two seconds from this clip. So I'll go ahead and move up two seconds and 12 frames over here. I'll set the out point and I'll insert the zone into the project bin. Next, I'll do the same for this clip over here. I know later on. We have this little yellow area letting me know where I've used this before. So this can help accelerate things on my side. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and grab around these two seconds of it. Okay, I'll add it to the project bin. And there we have it. So I'll put my first clip in, go ahead, put the second one. And for this third one over here, I'll grab it up to here, insert into the project bin. And I'll just grab the video without the audio and insert it in. And finally, we can put this over here. Let's see around here. All right. So we are now ready for the first transition. And we'll start with the zoom out effect. So with our first clip selected over here, we're going to add a couple effects to it. And later, we'll save these effects as a custom effect stack. So we can have the zoom out transition. Okay, so the first effect we're going to add is a box blur. So we'll add the box blur over here, set it to zero because it starts with 1% by default. Next, we're going to add a transform. And then finally, it's going to be a mix of transforms and mirrors. So let's search for a mirror up here. Let's add the mirror. All right, so before we start, let's disable the mirror. Go inside of our transform, we can disable the keyframes. We're gonna enable this start over here. And then we're going to scale this down to 50%. So the first transform goes down to 50%. We're going to align our image now to the right and then at the bottom with the align tools down here. If you want to see the on canvas controls, simply click on this icon over here. So I'll turn on the mirror again. We're going to add a second mirror and this time we're going to switch it to vertical. We're going to add another transform over here. So let's grab another transform, enable distort, and we're going to scale down to 50% as well. Let's remove the keyframes for now. And let's align this to the bottom right corner as well. So align right, align bottom. Finally, we're going to add two more mirrors. The second mirror down here is going to be vertical, set to vertical as well. And there we have it. Now we only really need three of these. This is why we're going to add another transform, turn off the keyframes, enable distort, and we're going to zoom in to 133%. It's going to give you a 132.96 or something of the sort. Caden Live has some issues with non-rounded numbers, so we'll skip over that. And for this transform over here, we're going to align it to the left and to the top. And now we have three by three repetitions, okay. So now we can add one last transform. And for this one, we'll keep the keyframes and you can zoom this into 300% and turn on distort. And there we have it. So without this last transform, we have this effect over here. And with the transform, we're fully zoomed in. All right. So let's move to the end of our clip. So I'll hold down Alt and I'll press the right arrow. So I jump to the end and I'll go back eight frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And on the last transform over here, I'll add a keyframe, then I'll jump to the end and I'll add another keyframe. Now notice my keyframes are set by default to smooth. You can enable the automatic smooth by going to this hamburger menu and down to default keyframes, you can choose a different default or simply change them manually with this little button over here. You see, if it's on linear, it's gonna be a sharp triangle, so on and so forth. All right. So on the last keyframe, we're going to set this back to 100 as such. 
So let's jump back to the previous keyframe over here. Let's go up to our box blur and we're going to add a keyframe, jump to the end, add another keyframe. And at the very end over here, we can add a little bit of blur. So I'll add like, you know, something like seven, seven percent. And there we have it. So now let's jump back to this keyframe and we're going to go back four more frames. So one, two, three, four, and simply hold down shift and press R. So shift plus R and it's going to cut our clip over here. Let's right click on this first part, go to delete effects. And now with the second part selected, we can do control C to copy, make sure to activate the top layer over here and control V to paste. And we can also delete the effects on this one, but we're going to add a transform and a box blur over here. Move the box blur above the transform, make sure to set it to zero, the box blur. And now we can use the bottom clip over here to jump to the keyframes. So jump to this keyframe over here, grab the top one, add a keyframe, jump to the end, add another keyframe, do the same with the transform down here. Okay. And now on the last keyframe for the transform, we're going to scale this down to 33%. And for the blur, we're going to add just a little bit of blur as well. So I'll say five and five. All right, let's make sure to enable distort down here. And there we go. Now with this zoom out effect created, okay, I'm simply collapsing all of these so we can see what we have. So with this created, simply click on the first icon at the top of the effect stack. So you can save the effect stack, name it how you want. So, so zoom out effect description, however you want, then click on okay. And it will add it to your effects over here. So you have custom effects and you have this zoom out already created. So I'll call this zoom out over here and I'll just say zoom out transition. Press okay. So we have zoom out up here. And with this top one, you can also create a preset for this one. So let's say we save as well. And we say zoom out clean plate, zoom out clean video. Okay. And with this done, we simply have to click on our second clip over here, double click the zoom out. It will add all of the effects here for us, as you can see. But before we do this, let me control Z, we can cut these last frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Shift R, we do the cut. Let's grab this, control C, go to the top layer, control V. I only press the up arrow to go to the top layer. Now on the bottom layer here, let's add the zoom out. And on the top one, we're going to add zoom out clean plate. So. Let's make sure everything is working like it should. We have this. It jumps over here. Let me see if I align the center. There we go. And for the bottom one, let's make sure everything's in order. You can see there's a little. Let's see here. Simply not centered for some reason. Fix the opacity. So these weird little errors normally wouldn't happen, but happen here. There were quick fixes. All right. Finally, at the very beginning of this clip, we're going now to add the zoom in or like the zoom out transition for this one. So we can come into this clip and to do so, we're going to first add a transform and then we're going to go look inside of our effects, video effects. We're going to look for lens correction, key frameable. All right. So in the very beginning, we're going to go forward one, two, three, four, five, six, six frames, add a keyframe, add a keyframe down here. On the first keyframe, let's make sure these first keyframes are set to smooth. So I'll click on it. Okay. And for the transform at the beginning, we're going to scale in. Let's move her down a bit. So it's centered somewhat aligned with this clip. And for the first frame for, for the first keyframe of the lens correction, we're going to add a lot of center correction and edge correction over here. Okay. And it gives us this nice effect. Okay. And 
let's grab our second clip over here. Let's control, control C to copy, go on the first clip, right click and go to paste effects. And now it's going to have the same zoom in transition in the beginning, zooms out, zooms out. So you already see how this is going. So for this very last clip over here, we can paste the effects. So this is going to add the zoom out transition, but we're going to go in the first transform and we're going to zoom in a lot more and we're going to center this. And now for this text over here, let's enable the top layer again. Now for the text, I'm going to copy this down here and I'll paste it to the text. And on the transform in the very beginning, I'll make it bigger to the text is no longer visible on the screen. And then I'm going to make the lens to start finish at least one frame after the text lands. And now to clean everything up, we can simply grab these three, right click, go to create sequence from selection, name it how you want. So runner one. Okay. We now have the first sequence with our transition. Let's do the same for this second set over here. Create sequence. I'll call this runner two. Press OK. And now last but not least, we're going to add to these two clips over here, lens distortion. So over in effects, we're going to look for lens distortion, key frameable. We're going to add one to this one. Let's do the animation. So at the very end here, we're going to add a keyframe. We're going to go back eight frames. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Add another keyframe. And on the last keyframe, we're going to add a lot of lens correction over here like this. We could add some blur if we wanted to or something of the sort. But no, we're going to add this lens correction. Then we're going to drag it and drop it on the other sequence here. And it has the lens correction at the end as well, giving us these very nice transitions. All right. And that's about it. Now for the rest, for the color grading that I did, that would be a different tutorial. Uh, that is it for this one. If you see over here, let me go ahead and just show you what I have. I have a levels, a saturation, a vignette, and I applied a LUT, the blue tint LUT at the end. I'm using the use effect zone so I don't affect the entire entire timeline so I don't touch this second transition that we have over here. Now for this second transition it is just as straightforward as the as the first one. So I'll go back to transitions. Go over here, let's go to project bin, grab our second clips over here. I'm looking for this when he falls in the water. And right before he jumps. So let's see around here. I'll add it to the project bin. And then with this one, I'll grab it right when he's about to jump, maybe around here and right when he jumps as such. Put it in the project bin. All right. So we can grab the first one over here, grab our second one, drag it in. Let me ungroup these, delete this. Now I'm going to accelerate these clips as they're very slowed. So I'll hold down control or click on the edge, the ending edge of the clip and I'll drag it in. We can see the percentage going up here. And then I'll do the same with this one over here. So for this second clip, I'll add a transform. You can see it doesn't fit the aspect ratio of our, of our composition. So I'll increase the size, let's say 110 and I'll move it a little to the side here, I'm trying to align these two a little bit in the movement as such. Okay. All right. So with the first one selected, you can go above the timeline. You have this icon here, which looks like a checkerboard, which, which says mix clips. You can use the keyboard shortcut U. click on it and let's zoom in here. You see it adds this transition. So right now it's set to Luma. Let's click on the drop down. Let's write in push or push left. So it's going to go like this. All right. So I'll place it at the center here and I'll move four frames to the left. So one, two, three, four. I'll drag this in. I'll go back to the center. One, two, three, four. And I'll drag this side in as well. All right. So now we have a much sharper transition. 
So let's troubleshoot any errors. Let's jump to the end over here, add a keyframe, push this all the way up to 1000. So it does the push all the way. This is because we changed the length manually. All right, there we have it. So on the very first keyframe, we can also set it to smooth. So it gives us an accelerated start to this. All right. Now we could add the blur to each one of the strips separately, but what that would not do for us, let me go ahead and look for blur. Any one of the blurs here, let's try box blur, for example, the center line will always be sharp between those two. So I'll delete these blurs. Okay. So we're going to create a new sequence out of this, call this whip, first okay, and there we have it. Now, if it's giving you this error where it's not showing you what's on this clip, just move it around a little bit, just so it loads, and there we have it. Now we can move to the, around the center of our transition, like such, add a box blur to our sequence, or keyframe here in the center and increase I'll go to the first keyframe and I'll switch this down to zero. Let's make sure it's set to zero. And one, two, three, four. I'll add a keyframe, drop it down to zero. One, two, three, four. Add another keyframe, drop it down to zero. And there we have it. So I'm going to set this middle keyframe to linear. This middle keyframe, I'm going to add even more blur to it. And there you go. And if ever you want to edit what's inside of these sequences, simply go to the sequence tab or inside of your project bin, you can find your sequences, double click on the one you're looking for and they'll open up. All right. All right. So that is it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It helps a lot. If you have any questions or doubt, leave them in the comment and I'll get back to you. And well, if you know anyone that would be interested in this sort of content, feel free to share it. I also have a Skillshare class on Caden Live, which recently dropped. So it's the latest version of Caden Live. It's an introductory um, lesson, but it's not just for absolute beginners. It teaches you quite a lot. There's a lot to take from it. Uh, and yeah, that is it. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.